Hello and welcome back. I am here with my good friend Tracy. I'm here with my delightful friend Amber. And this is the Road to Tarvalin today, talking about Lilin Moral, the spider, and my personal favorite of the Forsaken, for now, mm -hmm. McGideon. McGideon. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, Lilin, I don't give a fuck about a third name, Moral. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Because, <laughs> like, the more I was reading about her, and there's not a lot on her from the Age of Legends, it feels like, but I feel like there's also a lot given to kind of speculate about her. Mm -hmm. But her actions do not in any way speak to me about somebody who is concerned with gathering public approval so that she can get a third name. And I like it. Have you ever seen the movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas? No. No, I haven't. I know which one you're talking about, though. It's 90s. <laughs> Let me set the stage. It's this guy driving to work, having a bad day, stuck in a traffic jam, and just like everything bad that could happen to him happens and for lack of a better word, he just goes postal and pretty much goes on like a murder spree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's kind of how I see Mo Gideon. Like she was in this job that she probably didn't feel any real attachment to. And she's just like, yeah, well, I'm here. She's probably skimming some bucks off the top. A little insider trading. We I don't think know. That's definite. I feel like that's a <laughs> definite. I really, really do. I do. Right? And like I just violating ethics. Like she just, to me... My my headcanon is that she just doesn't care. Right. It's not like. Or she gets a thrill out of like fooling everyone that she can. Something about her, though, to me, reads like snapping, you know, like she was mm. just over it. But I guess that could be my own personal bias, because when I think of like having a job and in investments, that's what I would do. I would lose it. I <laughs> Okay, so I would turn to the shadow in a heartbeat. Yes. <laughs> like, enough. Enough. I, <laughs> I actually worked as an investment advisor for a little while, and I've worked in investment management companies. And the setting for this, like, especially when I was working at my one job, which was, like, fairly swanky and had, like, a really nice office. Like, I can see her, that corner office, in a skyscraper, staring out the window, being like, Hmm, how can I be my most outrageous self today? How can I do that? That's what I mm. see. Two different, two different theories, and I like them both. Mm -hmm. The other thing that really got me about this is, like, she's young. I mean, young, quote unquote, comparatively. Like, she's only, like, 200 years old. And she is also an Aes Sedai, but I don't really think that, like, that's the part of her that she identifies with. It's almost like... Like, oh, okay, cool, whatever, I can channel, I guess I'm an Aes Sedai, great. It's, like, at the bottom of her resume. Like, she doesn't huh. care about it that much. But she's only, like, yeah. 200. And her channeling capabilities aren't that high, all things considered. And we're talking about the Age of Legends here, where people were, were considerably much more powerful in the one power. Mm -hmm. So maybe, yeah, it is at the bottom of her resume. She's just like, eh, you know, trickle here, trickle there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and like, like how put this gif of, what is that, Leonardo DiCaprio just like flinging money out into the ocean? That's kind of how I see her, is that young, hungry, lap of luxury, all for me, fuck the rules. Hmm. Yeah. And getting away with it. And when she doesn't, okay, that's the other mental image that I have now of her too, is her like sitting in front of an ethics committee with like a team of lawyers being like, oh yeah, come at me. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, her name alone, the spider, mm -hmm. her personality to a fault is avoid taking risks or gambling. Mm -hmm. So when I'm trying to think of how she was before turning to the shadow, was it different than that? Was it more in line with kind of waiting in the shadows and doing things mm. stealthily? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I mean, if it is, like if that's like a long time part of her personality, then I wonder how much she didn't get caught for. In the information about her history, it says that as 
an investment advisor, she was called out for her, like, she was cautioned a number of times, even disciplined for violating its ethics and laws surrounding it. Yes, yes, that's what I was looking for. So she's already doing things that are kind of shady. I love this. I love this uh, Age of Legends power suit. Like I see her in a power suit and everything. I just love, love, love this. I love this. I don't know. I don't see her as power hungry in any way. Mm -hmm. More like. I don't know when you get when you give someone the name the spider. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you to, you toy with things that mm -hmm. you think you can get away with. She's definitely not in the out in the open doing things, taking risks, but you know, like playing with your food before you eat it mm -hmm. type of person. Yeah, where if she thinks she's safe, heck yeah, she's gonna do what she's gonna do and violate ethics and laws, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the moment that there's a spotlight shone on her she's gonna crawl <laughs> right back into the shadows mm -hmm. and I love that for her like I love the fact that her story is one that we receive a lot of throughout the entire it Wheel really of Time series. is and that is not the case with so many of the Forsaken like so we true. spend a good chunk of time with Mo Gideon and getting to know how she acts mm -hmm. and Thinking about her in the Age of Legends is really interesting, and it's just another one of those characters where I'm like, "Yep, I want to see, I want to see those flashbacks from all of the Forsaken that they mention in the television show. I want to see the outfits. I want to see the look. Like, I just feel like it would make these characters so much more well-rounded and mm -hmm. easier to relate to. Maybe. I mean, obviously, you don't always relate to the bad guys but that's when you can make a bad guy feel like a really real well-rounded character is when you can kind of like put your finger on something like yeah that that makes sense <laughs> yeah like I really like I felt a different connection to Mo Gideon than I had before having worked with a bunch of different investment advisors and whatnot they're like a breed unto themselves the luxury aspect of it, I think, was probably, like, to me, I don't really think this is, like, in the series anywhere. I think there's, like, just a teeny tiny bit of a comment that, like, I read when I was going through things that made me think that she might be like this, where, like, she likes her luxuries. Like, she likes things to be comfortable for her. But I don't know if that's something, because, I mean, Grendel obviously goes to, like, extreme lengths for what she likes, but I don't think Mugideon is quite as hardwired to want to establish something like that for herself until she feels like she can be in full control, if that makes sense. Uh, I think so. I think so. I don't see her as flamboyant, maybe. I definitely see her as like more bold, I think, in like Age of Legends pre becoming part of the shadow i think that just comes into play because of her getting caught maybe there were just a few places where she got a little overconfident and those are lessons learned that then when she became like a representative of the shadow she was like okay i know where to not step this time when she lets her guard down it does cause problems for her she does she does take risks in her own way but when we get to the spoilers, we can talk about that for sure, because mm -hmm. she's got some good moments. Mm -hmm. Her storyline is so long <laughs> in the series. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So let's see. Let's the look of Mo Gideon. She's described as a handsome woman with dark hair. She typically wears only red and black. Mm -hmm. And... She was one that went to the shadow long before the War of Power. Mm -hmm. And what I love about her is that she managed to keep her alliance a secret until the war had been going on for numerous years. Mm -hmm. And then during this time, she is acting as this spy or provocateur. And she has successfully filled the ranks within Luz Theron's command mm -hmm. and staff. So 
as she's doing this, she's responsible for major disasters in these early years of the war of power. Mm-hmm. And it can all be pointed to Mo Gideon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I love that. Mm-hmm. Like, it just say what you want about Lanfear, say what you want about Grendel. To me, this feels interesting. This mm. feels new. This feels mm-hmm. a little bit exciting. Mm-hmm. And maybe I just have a thing for Spycraft, but. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. You right? say the it's word espionage, really... and I'm like, yes, yes. Ears per <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> what did you say? Spiring? I'm in. Right? Tell me more. I don't want to keep saying this every time we do an episode, but I just, I would love to see it on the TV show. I would love for them to bring back the loose there and actor. And, mm-hmm. you know, you just see this simple looking woman in the background and Mm -hmm. later on you see her and it's revealed that she's a forsaken that would be cool Mm -hmm. that would be cool they probably don't have enough time uh amber (laughs) i have to like (laughs) rein myself in sometimes you know Uh, what i i love your ambition of what you'd like to see happen same 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 and i mean I think a lot could be done with the show if they gave it room to also include more of the Age of Legends. But I think, I mean, it's been a while since I've heard anything, but I know there was like talk of it, there being like Age of Legends movies being made. So maybe that content will be fleshed out differently at that time. And boy, would I love to see it. I think it would be amazing. Like, Well, the person who's writing those accents I could see him writing this in a very, like, Hollywood (laughs) way where, like, big budget, bigger actors. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, that would be cool to see it kind of done over the top ridiculous, like an action hero movie. Mm -hmm. Because when you're thinking about the Age of Legends, that's essentially what it is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, it is over the top. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. No, I love that idea. Maybe. Maybe we'll get some of it. Who knows? I've always felt as though Wheel of Time would make a really beautiful like movie or TV show. I still, I still feel pretty okay about the first season. Just gotta hope that all the things that kind of unraveled at the end of season one are pulled neatly back See? together into season two. I was right. Okay, he did four. Yeah. And he did X-Men First Class, which, okay, like, all right. But he also did Rim of the World, which I thought was really fun. Huh. So, yeah, like, I could see him making this really fun. But anyways. Mm-hmm. Mogidian. Yeah, Mogidian. And actually, Hal put this in the in the notes, and I, like, in chat, and I just wanted to uh, touch on it, too, because I didn't realize that she'd actually, like, managed to get herself worked into Luce Theron's ranks and was, like, kind of working from within. I think you might have already mentioned that. Did you mention mm-hmm. that? And I'm repeating you. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm I, sorry. She, she made it into his like command and staff structure. So yes. she was like in there. Yes, that's right. That's right. I felt like as I was saying, I was like, no, I think Amber already said that. <laughs> <laughs> what I do like though is that nobody knows how she was revealed to be a supporter of the side of the shadow well like a big question mark it's like eh, nobody really knows the other thing i was wondering is like what is she doing inside his command and then i was like oh, is she like is she fucking with the finances for the war of power like is that what she's doing like that would be kind of fun because you can't have i mean maybe you can in the age of legends but when i think about things like you can't have war without money and so if she was like making it so that deliveries didn't get made because bills didn't get paid because the funding wasn't there. And just like, oh, I don't know how that happened. Exactly. That's like one of the biggest, I don't know, like guerrilla warfare tactics almost. It's maybe not guerrilla warfare, but. Financial warfare? Well, I'm just thinking about how like if you work in a factory or something, it's like you don't tighten the bolts. Right. Like any little thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. to help the war effort Mm -hmm. in terms of like sabotage Mm -hmm. then that is it's a perfect it's a perfect job for mo gideon absolutely what she is 
born for. Mm -hmm. In the shadows, not making big moves, but sabotaging things. Mm -hmm. That is a great, that is a great thing for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that, that's the part that felt really right to me, where I was like, Mm -hmm. she could be messing with their money. She could be messing with their money. And if you mess with their money, oof, repercussions. Like she's responsible for, I don't, I don't even know if they gave like, a number or anything but like the death count because of her involvement is high but she was never like a general she was never on the field of battle and i was like what is she what is she good at and then also like her like spying and everything like if she's in charge of finances she's probably also aware of just about any movement that would be happening on loose there inside yeah and, so- and this is assuming that they actually use money in the age of legends true true yeah it's not not everything is paid for with goodwill and chore tree plant <laughs> <laughs> now when things went down she barely escaped capture and mm-hmm. this is when she was revealed to be a supporter of the shadow yeah we'll have to talk about that a little bit later mm-hmm. in the spoiler section so <laughs> this is going back to her sabotaging mm-hmm. but like, all of these people were killed in a diversion during this escape for her. Mm-hmm. And it was a matter of sabotaging the public transport system. Wow. And all I could think of was V for Vendetta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think, though, that when we get to her and I want to say, like, her introduction uh-huh. into the series, like, all of these things that you learn about her from her background it fits yeah. like to a T, I feel like, where some of the other forsaken, not so much. Yes. Like we have ones that change mm-hmm. drastically mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. she'll always be who she is. Mm-hmm. And which like is a natural born skulker. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody looks over her. Everyone just kind of is like, eh, it's Megidian. She's really not that important. And that's the. That's the persona that she creates for herself. Like, pay no attention to me. I'm not really here. I think she pulls it off really well, better than most of the other Forsaken. And she doesn't go over the shadow because she's jealous of Luz Theron. This is true. I don't, I, I don't even know if she does it because she, like, I mean, I'm assuming it's because she wants power. I mean, why else would you do it? Boredom. Yeah, like, the more you can mess with see what like you're 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 a fan of chaos <laughs> well that's that's exactly mo gideon i mean mm-hmm. i have a whole section here for the spoiler parts about her and chaos and mm-hmm. how well it goes together but yeah like i think like a spider playing with its food i mean she does things sometimes i think to see like if she can push mm-hmm. the boundaries mm-hmm. to see if she's able to do stuff Mm -hmm. that others can't Mm -hmm. while she's still kind of holding a grudge that others are more successful and are more out in the open Mm -hmm. and she doesn't like that i think she wishes she was considered brave and powerful but she's not she's mo gideon but there is a quiet power within her from the shadows that i do appreciate Mm -hmm. and i think that's what makes her my favorite i guess she's definitely moved up in my ranks as far as like i mean i don't really know if i have like a favorite forsaken or not but i think mo gideon's definitely like moved up there i like looking at characters more with you because like oftentimes you have appreciations for them that i haven't really thought of and i love that but i do i want to ask a question and i'm i hope we don't be able to still move into spoilers probably shortly but we've talked about like how she's considered or her power in the like her ability to channel is less than i think all of the other forsaken and i have to wonder and i'm wondering how you would feel about this how much do you think that that bothers her because i don't think it bothers her same She uses her brain, her intellect, her surroundings to Mm -hmm. dominate a situation, even if it's, like, from the background. And I'm I'm like, maybe this isn't such a 
detriment the way that it keeps kind of being pushed on us through reading like oh McGideon's not that powerful that's why she hangs out in the shadows I'm like I don't really know if that's the whole reason like I'm sure it has something to do with it but I don't think it's the entire if thing. If that's the case then in this world the only intimidating people are powerful channelers and that's just mm -hmm. not the case mm -hmm. like it really isn't. Mm -hmm. I mean we have characters from all different ranks, all different nations, all different power levels doing incredible things. I mean, and we have that same situation on the side of the shadow with Mo Gideon. Mm -hmm. Like, just because she wasn't as powerful as some of the other Forsaken, that does not mean that she didn't kill as many people. Mm -hmm. A lot of them just like... <laughs> helpless victims yeah but i mean she was just as deadly as the rest what can you say about that like i, mean, I think it's did I anyone she's i'm sorry i don't know go ahead i was just gonna say did anyone else manage to infiltrate the dragon's ranks i mean i don't know of another forsaken that did that that seems pretty badass to me she's a very capable intimidating force mm -hmm. on the side of the shadow i think so yeah up until maybe even the show or rereading it with you, costume or how a person dressed kind of just went back and forth pretty similarly. Like Age of Legends, they dressed similarly to how they dressed in the third age. And that's just silly. So going like with the way that the show did costumes and stuff, like I loved that kind of like clean line style that got shown in the one episode. And putting Mo Gideon, the way that she's described this shoulder length hair this handsome but not beautiful woman like put her in one of those like clean lined suits and I just I just love her <laughs> <laughs> you like that I do I do I always saw However, her costuming was done. I would like to see lace, but it's done in a way that it's almost jagged, resembling like a spider web. Mm -hmm. So like it doesn't have to be a focal point, but just some of that incorporated somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like a touch of it here and there. Mm -hmm. And I will say this before we go to spoilers, I did want to point out and I did want to mention because I do think it's important that. Probably out of all the Forsaken, Mo Gideon is the one who can hold hold a grudge like none other. Mm -hmm. Like if you discount her, then good luck to you because she will come after you. Like she will make it her life's mission mm -hmm. <laughs> to find you and make you pay. She is petty. She is petty that way. But I mean, mm -hmm. all the Forsaken, and you know, have lovely qualities, right? Like that, so yeah. <laughs> I just, I get a kick out of her. Like, I, uh. So, spoilers. Spoilers? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good Lord, Mogideon is in this series so long. I know. I, I've the gone through and I was like pulling. Through. Yes. I was pulling all of these interesting attributes about her. And I was like, wow. Like, it just keeps going. She's skilled in Balefire. Obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. Compulsion, obviously. Mm -hmm. She has the weave for keeping, which I love this one because you can't do it on like a living being. It would kill mm. it, but it's pretty much like a weave for preservation, like mm -hmm. a way to make sure your food doesn't go bad, which mm -hmm. I think during the Age of Legends, that would have been probably really important. Really important. And probably one of the reasons why it is said that it was such a great, wonderful experience because if people weren't hungry, if people didn't want for food, like that is, that is a huge step <laughs> that we are not dealing with today even. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, still got a long way to go before we, re we reach that Age of Legends level. But mm -hmm. she also helped to Gwen figure out the weave for making Kindiar. Yes. She can mask the fact that she can channel, which I think is a very cool one, mm. because mm -hmm. if you're a female channeler and you are around any Aes Sedai, they're going to know. Mm -hmm. They're going to mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on the flip side, she does not know very much of healing or cloud dancing mm -hmm. or changing the weather. Mm -hmm. 
And although she does not have the ability for talents and can't perform some of the weaves, some of the ones that were lost during the Age of Legends, there are a handful that she does know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Like the one for aligning the matrix. And that is this weave that's used to strengthen metal. Mm. And we think this is something that goes into making power rot weapons, which comes later in the series with Perrin. Mm, that's a lot. And Spinning Earth Fire and Milking Tears. From what I read, there's no real understanding or description of what Milking Tears is, mm-hmm. but to me it sounds like the use of weaves to control emotions or so maybe something similar to... A compulsion, like a type of compulsion, Mm -hmm. a branch of it, maybe. Interesting. Some of the things that she does, I feel, especially like her eavesdropping, I feel like that was probably something that she enjoyed using in her investment banker days. I bet that's one of the things she got caught for. I'm thinking here, if you wanted someone to make an investment, if you could somehow bolster their confidence or their boldness Mm -hmm. that would be really helpful like are you in on this you want to make this deal like Mm -hmm. feeling good about it yeah (laughs) nudge nudge okay sign here on the line man yeah she didn't necessarily have to be like a really strong channeler to be a really effective forsaken like the things that she she knew and knows it all just kind of feeds to make her I mean, she's one of the very few Forsaken that survive. I mean, she does get captured. She becomes a Domine, right? Yeah. So my humble opinion, her living at the end, her outlasting the rest of the Forsaken really fits. The Lanfear revelation to me didn't feel as good as the Mogidian kind of like scurrying off even though she's captured Mm -hmm. i feel like she is the obvious choice Uh of all the forsaken who has a chance Mm -hmm. at survival who has a chance at getting out of this who has the intellect yep to maybe be able to work out a way to free yourself Mm -hmm. and i mean we can go into it a little bit later or we can go into it now i don't it doesn't matter to me i don't care we're jumping all (laughs) over the place and i don't mind at all cool (laughs) there's so much to talk about because she's like in every she's like in every book and the things that she goes through like that's the other reason that to me she makes sense for being survivor is like what she has gone through i hadn't really read her scene where she had been captured and given to Shadar Haran. Like, I had not read that as, like, a scene of sexual abuse, I think. And, Um. like, reading it, like, through different threads and stuff when I was, like, looking into her, it was, like, other people had felt the same way and were like, wow, like, this happens way more often in the series than I was aware of. And I think Shadar Haran does the same thing to Masana as well i definitely can we let's go back to that i just want to touch yeah i'm so sorry (laughs) before we skip on from her survival i Mm -hmm. guess because one of these quotes that i found that really it made me kind of scratch my head where i was like hmm hmm Mm -hmm. so the big white book says It is said that her greatest asset was her ability within the world of dreams, Mm Teleron-Riode. Within its dimensions, her skills surpassed even Lanfear's, despite the latter's claim. Mm -hmm. She she dared never confront or challenge Lanfear in the world of flesh, for there she could not hope to match Lanfear's superior strength. Mm -hmm. So, Hmm. if you ask me... And I would. I would. makes... (laughs) It kind of makes the Lanfear Perrin thing a little off to me, unless Mm -hmm. you can point to this quote and say, well, Lanfear was actually less strong in Teleronrio, which therefore makes Perrin's achievements in Teleronrio 
even less impressive. Oh, so it was man. kind of like Perrin. taking a taking a couple <laughs> steps downward. And I'm not mm. trying to harp on this because you know, like people can love the Land Fear reveal. That's totally fine with me. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna judge anyone. But I don't know. It's kind of like overkill. Like <laughs> you know, like Mogidian survives, Lanfear survives. Like right? Yeah, I don't know. It it seems like a bit much to me. You know, I mean, granted, they don't survive in an ideal way for most of them, I think, but they still survive. So, and I mean, according to Sanderson, at least lanfear has got the world laying at her feet. So that seems pretty not bad for her. Yeah. And okay, so all of this aside, you were talking about the mind trap and shut her off. Yeah. And for Sufra. <laughs> Who but in the world invented something so horrible? You Robert cannot Gordon. tell me the Age of Legends was a great place when someone made that thing. I can't say it as cool yeah. as you do. It's, it's pretty scary. It's probably one of my least favorite parts of the book. Because of that implication of sexual assault, Mm -hmm. those are pretty much all of my least favorite moments in the book. (laughs) But I think this whole chapter is pretty, it's pretty outrageous and it is pretty awful. So this is Crown of Swords chapter 25, Mm -hmm. where we learn she's freed by Halima and then we have this lone merdral having him like push her in this one direction and she goes through like this cave opening almost mm-hmm. in shale ghoul and she's crawling on her hands mm-hmm. and knees and the ceiling is getting closer lower and lower yeah. and it is like a spiked ceiling Ooh. and when she gets you know to the point where she's flat like on her stomach mm-hmm. then shadow haran steps on her and he will not let her up so when he takes out this cage, the mind trap, he scrapes her blood and her saliva mm-hmm. and it activates it, which mm-hmm. is okay. Uh, but <laughs> as she's screaming, it says that she howled in agony and ecstasy. Mm-hmm. So you can read into that however you would like. Mm-hmm. But what you were saying, Tracy, mm-hmm. like this quote here makes me agree that that's what was happening yeah and i think like a couple of the threads that i read over said that it was confirmed by robert jordan that that was what happened and that i mean i don't know i'm not necessarily a fan but i i suppose if you're talking about like torture and how to break someone sexual assault usually stands high at the list so it's effective it's weird because i think the wording around it was like she decided to let herself be broken and Mm -hmm. like i don't i'm trying to think of like the mental work that she must have gone through to get to a point where she was like i'm just gonna let this happen and maybe once that happens like this will be over that's like i feel like she in my opinion that's a way to survive it yeah yeah the only i guess i will say like the only thing about this situation in the wheel of time Mm -hmm. that i appreciate is that it's mostly like alluded to and it is not in your face for the most part but at the same time you still have to ask the question is it necessary i don't know you know Mm -hmm. i don't know so I want to talk about the mind trap just a little oh, bit please. more because yeah. I feel like this goes hand in hand with her exit of the series. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with this mind trap, she makes a comment to herself that she doesn't know of anyone ever being let out mm. and how like rare that would be. Once the mind trap is set, let me see. She had never heard of anyone being released once a mind trap was set, but she would find a way. Mm -hmm. So when she's captured at the end of the series, her mind trap, like 
this is still activated, right? Mm. Like the Corsura. You know what? I always assumed that it had been broken. Let me see here. So when Moradin shows up, oh, I wrote so much about this <laughs> mind trap down. It's like a whole page. It's seriously a really fascinating and horrific object. The idea that you can capture someone's soul. The times where Mogidian says things where like she feels more than like stroking the portion that he carries around his neck that like this holds her soul. What? This. this is this is why I think it's still active because she can feel through it and I feel like if it was no longer active she would have made the thought like oh yay like good you know it's no longer active but she never really makes a statement like that mm -hmm. and when she's trapped at the end of the series or captured by the Shan Chen she's still holding on to this thing because in my opinion if it was worthless now if it didn't work like she just would have like crushed it and moved on you know mm -hmm. like smash it don't need it I'm free, I'm safe, but she's still holding on to this thing, which makes me think that she has to protect it for a reason. And that makes her survival more interesting to me mm -hmm. because if she's caught and they find this thing, then you can make someone a slave or if they have the understanding of how to recreate it, then you're dealing with like <gasps> big time scary stuff happening. If the Shan Chen knew how to make one of those. <gasps> Stop. Amber. That's scary. That's terrifying. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but, like, this is, I don't know, like, this is what I'm saying. Like, all of this ending with Mo Gideon, to me, feels like that's where all of the potential, like, that's where you could really milk a wild story with land fear. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, I. So for me, I always felt as though, because she's connected to Moradin, right? Right. And yes. he, his soul dies, his body survives. Is there anything about, like, the end of someone's life being the end of the attachment to the Corsuvra? Or does it, I like, is she attached to Rant now? Or is she attached to the Mind Trap? Like, because it was her blood and her saliva. Is she attached to it regardless oh, of, of... who holds it. Right. It's whoever... The victim becomes a mindless slave, right? So, like... Well, not totally mindless. Because she does have that moment where she, like, bail fires the, the ship that's carrying Nynaeve. And she definitely was not supposed to. So she still can do things of her own, quote-unquote, free will, I think. But I also think, like... She feels the weight of Moradin, even while she's doing this one rebellious thing. Yeah, but he has he has the ability where he could turn her into a mindless slave if he yes. wanted to. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So it's not directly attached to a person; it's attached to the object, right? I mean, that's I how think I you're right. It. Mm hmm. No, talking it out, I think you're right. I always assumed that it was in some way also connected to the person holding it. But I think it's just like the contact, you know? Right. And that's why she's still holding on to this thing, you know, after all, you know, the last battle. Like if she didn't need it, if she was in the clear, if she was safe, mm -hmm. she would have chucked that thing into the ocean. Yeah. You know? But the thing is, is if someone gets a hold of it, like, they can control her. And I feel a lot of sympathy for Mo Gideon more so than I expected, you know, going through all of this. And I think, too, that there's something just about her that if you want a good villain, you need to see all of the aspects of who she is. And I hadn't thought about that. So... This is why I think that she was let out of the mind trap in the first place. Mm -hmm. So when we were going back to her sabotaging things and all of the stuff that she had done in the War of Power, mm -hmm. 
she is such a supreme Mm -hmm. character of chaos Mm -hmm. and that's why she was let out Mm -hmm. because i just think that she's she's very useful Mm -hmm. very useful despite her strength and the one power you know whereas lanfear feels really overconfident i feel as though mcgideon might be one (laughs) It's weird to say this about like an evil person. She might be one of our most like level and capable and possibly even self aware forsaken. She's driven for herself. Like she doesn't want to take over nations so that she can rival Rand in battle or anything like that. She wants to survive and she wants to be at the top when she's done with it. At least that's what it feels she- like to me. She feels like a believable character, mm-hmm. I think is why I like her so much and not not so cartoony, maybe. Mm-hmm. Like where I'm like, oh yeah, like that tracks. I could see someone doing that. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. She she behaves in a believable way mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. I love that she disguises herself and travels with Nynaeve and Elaine to Saladar. Like Right under their noses. I Mm -hmm. love that. That does not feel very spider-like to me. That feels like a taunt in some ways. Maybe it's more that playing with your food thing. Like she... I think it's just a grudge. Nynaeve bested her, so she's like set out for payback. And Nynaeve is her target. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Nynaeve and Brigida. And Hal put this in chat too, that... She was the reason Mo Gideon was found out as being a forsaken in loose there. I wish camp. we knew about I I wish What we a had story. That story. I I wish that it wasn't a mystery. Right. Pure speculation. <laughs> but she was so okay, so Brigitte in this case actually was a super sleuth administrative assistant. I could see Brigitte being some type of guard or watch person or something like not real high up in the rank somewhere that just walked in and saw the wrong thing at the right time and was like gotcha Ah. (laughs) and then from that moment mo gideon was like that brigida i'll get her for this (laughs) well and then i was also i'll never forgive you or forget you like somehow Mm -hmm. mo gideon recognizes Brigida in Teleron Riot as Tedra, Tedra, mm-hmm. whatever her name was in the Age of Legends, like she somehow recognized her, even though they shouldn't have looked anything alike. And I was trying to find like how did how did she know? How did Mogidian recognize Brigida? I think the closest yeah. thing that I found online was someone saying that perhaps. Mogidian's ability to use and sense Teleron Rio gave her some sort of insight into Brigida and potentially like her past reincarnations or something. And I was like, she had like soul glasses on. Yeah. Like, I see you. <laughs> Hold on a second. Ooh, that's Let me... an interesting theory. How says maybe aligning the matrix involves seeing souls? Ooh. The lighting the matrix is the metal one, I think. But maybe milking tears, maybe that's the one. Maybe that's pulling your past your lives soul. out. Mm. Interesting. That's terrifying. Right. Terrifying. Man, the Age of Legends is so much scarier than we think it was. So many of these devices like the, shouldn't exist. That chair? <laughs> like, that whatever chair yeah. it is that you like put people in, you channel into it and it, like tortures them for you. Maybe though Gideon yeah. was feeling like she was fighting against an unjust system. Maybe that's how she Doubt felt. It. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. No? Doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to dress her up or anything. <laughs> I just like thinking of like all of these like speculative things that Mo Gideon could have used and seen and like what turned her into the character that she was like she's not she's not dumb by any means like she might be one of the most cunning people that we see in the series i think and maybe that's like a really high estimation but she just feels really realistic yeah 
I think the other fact just comes down to simply liking her as an adversary for Nynaeve because they're such different yet similar people Mm -hmm. where Nynaeve is this incredible channeler but she's maybe a little bit too brash and Mm -hmm. not in control of her emotions and with her block she's trying to work through some things and so she's not quite where she should be Mogidian is just hellbent on finding Nynaeve and Mm -hmm. winning in this one-on-one challenge with her it seems like Mm -hmm. and when we get to that moment in the fires of heaven I think Nynaeve is teaching Swan and Teleronriot and Nynaeve spots Mogidian and kind of boot swan out of Teleron Riode. Mm-hmm. Nynaeve has this moment where she is afraid and she says I'm so bloody tired of being afraid mm. and despite how angry she's trying to make herself mm-hmm. she's too angry to think straight and she's just she sees her weakness in that and it's perpetuating her block mm. mm-hmm. and so we have this whole back and forth between Mogidian and Nynaeve, mm-hmm. and it is due to Mogidian's balefire that Nynaeve eventually breaks her plot. Mm-hmm. So it's like this whole story between these two characters, and Brigida is usually like the third in this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. trifecta, I guess, but she's involved a lot in this story as well. And I just think it's a really nice circular story that has like it's a good beginning a good middle a good ending Mm -hmm. and I love how that plays out throughout the entire series Mm -hmm. it's just I don't know it's a fun story and if you like Nynaeve I feel like of course that could make you hate Mogidian Mm -hmm. but in my case it makes me really appreciate Mm -hmm. Nynaeve's story therefore I'm like I love Mogidian like it's a fun character yeah it's a great character and I mean, this is another place where I feel as though it's it's brains over channeling ability that actually ends up having Nynaeve collaring Mogidian, right? Like she figures right. it out. Exactly. And she fork roots her. No channeling involved. It's beating Mogidian at her own game. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's an, it's another reason to appreciate how they they connect on the page. I think it's really good. I think I don't think you can have the Wheel of Time without Mogidian. I think it's I think it's a fair bet we're gonna see her. I'm really excited to see the casting. I agree. Well let's wrap it up there <laughs> and <laughs> good with that. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks mm-hmm. for sticking with us through this episode. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel Mm -hmm. if you like these 101 style episodes. And I'll leave it at that. 